Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you are a space nerd like myself, you might be aware that the Space Symposium is going on right now in Colorado. And uh, one of the interesting announcements was from Orbital ATK, who have unveiled a new rocket in the form of the Omega. Actually, the capitalization's a little interesting on this one. But yeah, I mean, the basic concept is it's a core solid rocket booster for the first few stages using Castor and uh, Gem rocket engines. And the upper stage is very similar to a twin engine Centaur with two RL-10 engines and a, a whole bunch of hydrogen. Yeah, the Omega. People aren't really quite sure how to capitalize it just yet. But yeah, it's all carbon fiber and it actually does share a lot with uh, previous launchers. In particular, it bears more than a passing resemblance to the Ares-1. The Ares-1 was supposed to be the crew launch vehicle for the Constellation program, which was ultimately cancelled and then reborn as the SLS. But yeah, this is the diagram that was put out. It shows a Castor 600 or a 1200 as the first stage with a pair of Gem 63s attached to the side. Second stage is a Castor 300 and then there's that third stage and a 5 metre payload fairing for pretty large payloads. Apparently it's going to be capable of something like 8 tonnes to geostationary orbit. I mean, I gather that this is being pitched as a replacement for Delta IV Heavy one would hope that it's going to be a whole lot cheaper. There are even data sheets doing the rounds giving me rough payloads. So of course, the question is, given this limited information, can I build something realistically like it in Kerbal Space Program? And of course, the answer is yes. This is using realism overhaul. So this is accurate. It's I'm doing the heavy version for complicated reasons. Realism overhaul doesn't actually have the Castor 600s, 300s, or 1200s. The Castor 1200 is actually based on a four-segment uh, space shuttle booster, albeit with a different casing. The 600 is basically a space shuttle booster with only two segments, and the 300 is a single-segment version of the space shuttle booster. That's the rough way of saying it. Now, we ha don't have the Gem 67s, we do have Gem 60s, which are roughly equivalent, but obviously not quite as awesome. So I have those, and those are, of course, the first things to burn out, leaving that space shuttle booster as my core stage to burn for another 20 seconds or so. I, I suspect that you would get better perf or longer performance on that stage and the, the real thing. So the second stage is built using procedural engines. It's a procedural solid rocket booster, and it's roughly the right size and mass and uh, say propellant mass. The problem is there is a bug in realism overhaul right now that I can't figure out, and it's only generating, it's generating about half the thrust it should, which means it burns for about twice as long, which uh, means that the spacecraft doesn't quite get into as lofted a trajectory as I would like. So between this and the first engine not being quite right, I don't think I get quite as much velocity as I would as the real Omega will realistically have. The payload on this is actually only about eight tons, so it's significantly lower than we would expect. In terms of size, the first and second stage diameter is 3.7 meters. The upper stage is a five meter wide stage with a fairing that's about five meters wide as well. Finally, we get to the upper stage running on two RL-10 rocket motors. These are fed by 70,000 pounds or 20, 31 tons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen. I think the tank sizes I kind of tweaked until I got the right fuel mass, but the mass distribution won't be correct and we don't really know how much uh, dry mass these stages have. These had about 10 minutes worth of fuel to burn through, so I'm going to cut through to the end. And yes, indeed, it does actually get into a nice orbit with plenty of fuel to spare. In fact, I decided to just leave the engine running and see if I could get it all the way up to geostationary transfer orbit. In my haste to build this spacecraft, I didn't include important things like eulage motors so that we could reignite the engines after uh, shutting it down. We didn't include batteries or anything to keep it running for long periods of time, which basically meant that I just wanted to leave the engine running. And I do come up slightly short here, but I'm going to say that in my defense, this is a first attempt put together very quickly. I didn't have 
the exact solid rocket motors that we would require. They were older, lower performance. Really, the performance is the same, but the casings were would be a lot heavier. Because, you know, the new design of these engines is, while it's similar in dimension to the solid rocket motors on the shuttle, they're going to use carbon fiber wound casings instead of the uh, metal casings that the shuttle uses, as I understand it. And that will, of course, save a significant amount of mass. Orbital ATK already have several launch vehicles which use entirely solid propellant. For example, they have their Pegasus air-launched rocket, they have their uh, Taurus, and they have their Minotaur. And while a name like Omega would imply that they're perhaps this is the final one, I, I don't think so. I think they're going to continue developing and innovating on their launch vehicles, you know, for as long as they stay in business. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, given that they supposedly are building hardware as we speak. So hopefully that's incentive enough for some Kerbal modders to actually add the proper engines to the game so we can actually recreate this for real. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.